right now. Thank you, Jesus. 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 You're the same God. You're the same God. Yeah. How we need you now. I need you. Hallelujah. Ask the Holy Spirit to come. Hallelujah. I'm calling on the Holy Spirit. Almighty River. Almighty River, come and fill me up. Come and fill me Lord, that you Thank delivered you. us, Father God, from sin and death, Father God. Your word says, Father, we are new creations Thank in you, Christ Lord. Jesus, Father God. Your word says, Father God, that there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus, that you have healed us, Lord. You've sealed us, Lord God. And Father God, let us walk worthy today, Father God. We believe today you're going to break off chains, Father God. You're going to break off chains, Father God. What the enemy meant for evil, God is going to turn it around for the good. Amen. Amen. Today the enemy has to flee and with that we bind the, the, the principalities, we bind Satan's demons and devils, principalities, things in the airwaves, amen, uh, magistrates in heaven, we bind you and we command you to flee from all truth church right now in Jesus mighty name, we command you to flee from those who are watching online and all around the world in Jesus mighty name, today is your day of salvation, today is your day to be set free and we welcome the Holy Spirit here, the presence of God that moves in mighty signs and miracles and wonders that raises the dead, amen, and and brings them back to life that heals the sick yes. Lord that does so much and everything we thank worship you, you Lord we, worship. we thank you for what you're gonna do amen. here today Lord in Jesus name amen, amen. oh my gosh I feel stirred up Woo! you guys feel stirred up amen. Hallelujah. God is good amen God is good I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to brother Terry Moore hallelujah Praise the Lord. Amen. You all was dancing in the spirit. Welcome at All Truth Church. Take a look at each other. Get a photographic memory. That's your brother and sister. Keep falling in love with each other. And, and for the new visitors, please keep coming because God will give you what you're looking for. Today is a day of revival, a yes. day of coming together, yes. a day of breaking bread. A day of feeding and laughing and loving on each other and trusting the Holy Spirit to continually to grow us up in maturity. Amen. I see faces that's glowing, eyes that's shining, Hallelujah. a heart that's needing Amen. the love of Jesus. Today is an awesome day to break bread of fellowship. We barbecuing. We welcome people, the visitors. We welcome the family of House of God. Eat up, full up, and dance up. <laughs> this is the house of God. Yes. Don't be shy. Yes. This is the time of delivery. This is the day yes. that God is breaking shackles. Amen. Yes. In the mind, yes. the heart, yes. and the soul. All belongs to Jesus Christ. And we come together, I just feel the aroma of the love. That's what percolates God's house, is love. And the visitors who are sitting at home, feeling the love, want to come and receive the love, all you got to do it, one step, two step, and your car cranks. Uh -huh. And come on down. Yes. So right. once again, I'm going to invite the Holy Spirit, which is already here in the presence of God, with two or more gathered. He's in the midst. Yes. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your glory. We thank you for the love that we were searching for, God. And you revealed it to us. We're better fathers, better brothers, better wives, better sisters, cousins, nieces, nephew. We know how to radiate this love of God to our house of family. If they're not saved, they're watching you. 
and God continued to mature us, continued to move things out of our heart, purge us, sanctify us, God, and direct our footsteps. This is your ground, the holy ground of your sanctuary. Bless us, God. Continue to increase as we decrease. Show yourself, God, by using us to be that example. We ask it in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to continue to rest on us. All of us in agreement, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'll get taller. <laughs> Amen. 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 Praise amen. God. Well, welcome everybody. Good morning. Amen. What a powerful worship this morning. Yeah. Um, we'd like to welcome everybody this morning to All Truth Church. Those watching on social media, good morning and God bless you. Uh, we're All Truth Church here in the city of San Bernardino. You can find us at 1525 North D Street, Suite 16, excuse me, Suite 15 in the city of San Bernardino. Uh, we're not very far from anywhere you may be, so just keep that in mind. We're right here off the 215 freeway, 210 freeway, the 10 freeway. So let it remind you, God is calling you. Come on down. Amen. God bless you. So I'm going to give a few announcements this morning. Again, we'd like to welcome those that are here today, the guests here today, those that are here for the first time. Welcome, everybody. Amen. This is All Truth Church. We are a growing church. Amen. And we have a lot of things going on here for the kingdom of God. So we'd like to uh, just say this morning, Sunday service, we um, get together every morning or every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. where we hear the message and the word of God. Amen. We'd also like to mention that we have a women's Bible study every Wednesday here at All Truth Church with Pastor Lorena and the women here of the church as well. It's an awesome ministry. The women of the Lord, uh, they are reading the Bible from Genesis all the way through Revelation. Amen. Amen. What an awesome thing. So if you're not part of that ministry and, and you feel that nudge, the, the Holy Spirit's calling you, now would be a great time to come on down. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Uh, we'd also like to, um, good morning, good morning. Welcome in. Uh, we'd also like to... Uh, let you guys know that we do an evangelist ministry on Thursdays. We call it Revival Evangelism here in Ultra Church. Every Thursday at 3 p.m. they meet here and meet out and hit the highways and the byways, uh, spreading that seed in the love of Christ. Amen. And we just like to thank those that are, are a part of that ministry as well. Um, we also like to mention every Friday we have a Bible study, which we like to call Fire Fridays. Yeah. And it is such an awesome thing. If you haven't made it yet, now's the time to get invited. Here's the invitation. Come on down. Um, we meet every Friday at 7 p.m. And it's always a great time here. Fellowship, hear the word, and, and study the Lord's word. Amen. We also get together once a month, every, um, every month, once a month. We like to call it the Family and Friends event, which we get together, um, the, the congregation here. We like to invite family members, friends, co-workers, anybody you think that uh, may not know the Lord or somebody that may have fallen off with the Lord and, uh, you know, want to rededicate themselves to the Lord. Uh, now's a great time. There's a little uh, chance of opportunity. So go ahead and step into faith and, and invite them over. It's a great time. Amen. And also, we just like to um, mention that this is the third day of the revival here at All Truth Church. We like to extend our our, um, our welcomes and and uh, our love for Voices of the Street Ministry that came all the way from Houston, Texas, to be with us here this weekend. Pastor Andrew Rosano, his wife, and um, Sister Christina. <laughs> Amen. Powerful ministry, guys. So. Again, this is All Truth Church. You can find us on social media at Facebook, at David Lorena Facebook page. You can also find us at Gospel Kingdom. We're also on YouTube at Gospel Kingdom TV, which Gospel Kingdom TV is a ministry where they have the programming of a lot of the events that are happening here at All Truth Church, as well as other um, ministries. We have uh, live testimonies. Um, we have a lot of things going on, guys. So I just strongly encourage you, if you're not part of the ministry, here's your chance to go ahead and be that. So we just thank you today. 
Um, before I hand the mic back over, I just want to thank everyone again from uh, All Truth Church here, our special guests and friends, um, our new brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. God is good all the time. Amen. So we just like to thank everybody here today, and let's get ready for God's word. Amen. May God bless you. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you, Brother Marcelino, for keeping us informed with everything that's going on in the church. Amen. Again, we have so many events and things to be a part of, and we want everyone to just be a part of it. Amen. Amen. This is a time of revival, right? Amen. Time of revival. Hallelujah. Well, how many know that the offering and the tithe is still worship unto God? Amen. Did you know that, um, they, that in the Old Testament, that's how they would worship God? And even in the New Testament, they outdid themselves. <laughs> they gave above and beyond to worship God. Amen. It was all to worship God. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and be reading from, um, and I'm going to ask Sister Stephanie if you could come up uh, and show everybody where the, the offering basket is. If you could hold it, please. All right. Malachi 3, verse 8. Will a man rob God? Wow. Yet ye have robbed me. But you say, where have we robbed you? And he says, right away without even breathing, in tithes and offerings. It says, actually, I'm going to go back to verse 7. Even from the days of your, for, uh, from the days of your father, you are gone away from my ordinances. Ye have not kept them. Return unto me, which means come back to me says the Lord. And I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But you say, wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But you say, wherein, yet, wherein have we robbed thee? He says, in tithes and offerings, you are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open to you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations, here's another blessing, all nations shall call you blessed for you shall be a delightsome land saith the Lord of hosts. God, we thank you for your word. Amen. God is telling us today there's so many blessings, amen, in giving to the Lord and coming back yes. to him, to returning to him, amen. amen. How many tithers and people that have given offerings have testimonies that God has blessed them in their time of need, amen? Yeah. Come on. I know at All True Church we have many testimonies, amen, and even all around here, all around the world, we have testimonies that God comes through when we give him and we worship him with our tithe and offering. What is the tithe and offering? The tithe and offering are the first fruits, which means that the first 10% of what you get from your paycheck, you give it to God. Amen? And I don't care what anybody says. You cannot prove God's word wrong. Amen? You cannot prove God's word wrong. When you obey his commandments, he blesses you. That's it. Amen? Um, anybody made a vow of poverty here? But they want to be poor. <laughs> no, I don't think so, right? <laughs> I'm telling you, Pastor David and I were always tithers, and that's why we can boldly declare the word of God. When we weren't tithers, we were poor, we, we, we were broke, we were always getting loans, we were always struggling, amen? Even when we had good paychecks, it's like we had holes in our pockets. They were just falling through, amen? But as soon as we started tithing, God gave us full coverage insurance, Amen. How many want full coverage insurance over your life? Amen. I have a testimony. Last week, we actually had a big emergency at our house. Amen. Where we had a huge leak. Um, some pipes that broke underneath my, what we live with my mom, with underneath her house. And the whole house was about to get flooded. I mean, it was like a river. I mean, I, I kid you not. 
And um, we weren't home at the time, so by the time we got home, I don't even know how long it had been flooding. And so in that moment, God gave us wisdom to call the fire department. And I remember God saying, just be still, just calm down. Everything's going to be okay. I don't want you to be anxious. I don't want you to worry. And believe me, how many know when one thing goes wrong, one thing breaks, a lot of things break. Amen? Right. Amen. Have you been there? Amen? I know I'm not the only one. So as I was talking to one of the plumber ladies at the phone, which they have 24-hour plumbing service. I don't know why they can't come within 24 hours <laughs> if it says 24 hours, but they couldn't. She said, you know what? I just want to let you know you're doing a really good job, you know? And I was just like, wow, thank you. And she said, you know, um, I go, I'm sorry, I'm just pregnant. And, you know, we just really don't know what to do. And she said, you know what? She goes, you're doing a good job. She goes, I'm a caregiver too. And she said, and I was pregnant and my mom had had a stroke and she became paralyzed when I had to take care of her. How many know somebody has it worse than you? Amen. And I said, wow. I said, you really went through that? She said, yes. I said, you know what? Thank you. And in that moment, I knew the Lord had just told me, be still and know that I'm God. And then he brought confirmation because he will not only give you wisdom, but he'll give you the knowledge of what to do next. So then I was like, thank you. And in that moment, he told me, call the fire department. So we called the fire department, drama at our house, you know. They came, they turned off the water. And then the next morning, the Lord still told me, be still. And he told me through my husband, he said, continue to go to Bible study, God's gonna work it out. And I said, you know what, that's that's right in line with what he's saying. So that's crazy, right? Amen, because how many know we don't live in the, the physical world, amen? If you're in the physical world, you're gonna be yelling at people, kicking the cat, being upset, blaming people, you know? So the next day I said, okay, God, you got this taken care of. And after Bible study, I had shared my testimony and we actually pray. I said, I never received prayer at church. I never asked for prayer, but this time I am because uh, they quoted us uh, $1,300. Well, the, the, the testimony, the test and the victory after the test is that after Bible, somebody, after Bible study, somebody told me, let's go to the bank. I'm gonna go ahead and give you those thousand dollars. <laughs> Amen, <laughs> hallelujah. Another miracle was that they brought it down from 1300 to just 1000 Amen. So God is faithful, I'm telling you. When you trust God and you give him his first, it's not about the amount like Pastor David said. It is, the tithe is the 10%. But when you give him first, when you say, God, you know what? I want to put you first in my finances. I want to trust you not only with this little area of my life. I'm going to let you come into my closet. I'm going to let you come into my bank account. I'm going to let you have every area of my life. God will bless you. Amen. Whatever thing you're going to go through, because we're going to go through things, whether we are believers or not believers. Okay. But you have full coverage insurance. So with that, I want to invite you. Amen you know, uh, to come up, amen, and if God's putting it in your heart to give, he says, be a cheerful giver, amen, he says, share your testimony, because it is by the word of your testimony, by the blood of the lamb that we overcome, how many know God wants us to be overcomers, so if you want to, amen, hallelujah, overcomers in our finances, amen, now, praise God, we're, 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 we're doing good, but um, let's go ahead, and uh, if you want to come up and give a tithe or an offering, Come up at this time. Stephanie's holding the basket. I also want to share that if you're saying, I want to give, but I want to give electronically, don't let that hold you back because the enemy, as soon as you say, I want to give, and he'll try to hold you back. You can give through PayPal. We have a PayPal address called paypal.me slash gospel kingdom TV. PayPal.me slash gospel kingdom TV. And that is our, tele our media network. So let's go ahead and thank you, Lord. He says in James 1, 17, every good gift, every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there's no variation or shadow due to change. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, let's go ahead and pray for the offering and the tithe. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we know, God, your word says, for I am the Lord, I change not. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word, Lord God. We thank you. It's not our word. It's your word, Father God. It's your word. It's, it's the line of Judah being released, Father. 
Father, we thank you, Father God, for this time and this offering. We ask you that you will bless it, that you will multiply it, God, that you will do only what you can do, Father God. Father, you know that this is, uh, Father God, your work, Lord. Your word says the gates of hell will not prevail against your church, Lord. We thank you for your provision. I pray blessings over everyone here today, Father God. Even those that, the tither, the, 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 those that gave an offering, and those that said, I can't give, but you know what, God? Um, when I can, I will give. Amen. God is seeing your faith right now, and he is meeting you right there where you're at. Amen. He's meeting your faith. He's meeting your expectations, and he's meeting your purpose. Amen. Father, we just give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise, because you are forever God, and you are forever good and faithful, and so much more. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. I'm going to call up now Pastor David. Amen. Praise the Lord. How's everybody doing? Amen. It's good to see everybody here. Everyone just take a deep breath. Just, you're in the right place. Amen. You are in the right place. And God is going to move in a special way this afternoon. I believe God's going to do some major miracles today. Amen. So let's be open to God's will. Another, let's just take another deep breath. Amen. Praise God. Let's just pray. Father, we just thank you for what you're going to do today, God. I pray, God, that you will just speak to us, encourage us. More than anything, God, reveal your love to us, God. You change your mind through your kindness. Your mercy endures forever. You're releasing mercy today, Father. And we give you praise, God, that only you can turn it around. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we have our speaker today, but I just wanted to give a word of encouragement, amen. And just, it's good to see uh, the people that came today, you know, uh, Ezekiel and, and Brianna, good to see you guys. We love you guys, amen, and we're happy that you're here. And Danny, thank you for being here, amen. We've been praying for you. I'm telling you, we've been praying for you, man, and I know God has you here for a reason, Amen. But I just want to share just a word of encouragement. Judges chapter 16, verse 20. The word of God says, Then she called Samson. Let me say Samson. 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 The Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and thought, I'll go out as before and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. Are you guys listening to me? Yes. See, Samson had divine protection over him. The hand of God was protecting Samson, and the devil was trying to get a hold of Samson. You know, he, he got connected with Delilah. And why was he connected to Delilah? Why was he so connected to her? Was that there were soul ties. And there was witchcraft involved. Amen? Whenever you're so addicted to something, whenever you're so stuck to something that is not of God, a lot of times it's witchcraft or there's demons that are behind it. Amen? And here Samson was stuck. He was in bondage. And this witch, amen, was trying to take his life, was trying to kill him. And God was always protecting him. But then there was a time that the, the Lord left him and the enemy came. The enemy came and took out Samson. This is what I want to say today, man. What I want to share to you is that you have divine protection over you. There is divine protection. This is not a message of condemnation. I just want you to understand is that the reason why you're not dead, the reason why the enemy couldn't take you out is because the hand of God is upon you. See, we need to recognize the mercy of God. Amen. We need to recognize that there are people that want to kill you, that want to destroy you, amen, and that's Satan and his demons, amen. 
And we got to understand that there is a divine protection over us. The devil had a conversation with Jesus and he said, I can't touch Job because there is a hedge of protection over him. See, I want us to thank God today for the hedge of protection that is over your life, over my life, over your family's life. Amen. I decree to you today that there is a shield over your life that the devil and his demons and the enemy cannot penetrate. In Psalms chapter 2, the word of God says that God laughs at the threats of the enemy. You want to make God laugh? Amen. Let the enemy talk. Amen. God laughs at the threats of the enemy. And I want to encourage you today is that God is your shield. God is your fortress. God is your castle. God is your protection. God is your helmet. God is your breastplate of righteousness. God is your bout of truth. God is the preparation of the gospel of peace. Shut up on your feet. Your steps have been ordered by God. God is a lamp to your feet. Amen. He got you covered. He is your rear guard. He is dispatching angels over your life. And we need to praise the Lord today because he is protected. You. You're blessed coming in and you're blessed coming out. Amen. We need to know that God is with us. See, if it wasn't for God being on our side, that's what King David said. Amen. I'm going to summarize it. We would have been swallowed up by the enemy. And I know who my protection is. I know we know who our protection is, and that is God. You need to know today that God is with you. When you go back, wherever you're going to, amen. When you go to court, wherever, whatever you're going through, when you go through the, shout, the valley of the shadow of death, when you go through the neighborhood, the hand of God is with you. God is protecting you. God is watching you, amen. God is shielding you, amen. And I just want to praise God for that today, amen. Man, come on, someone give, someone give him a praise. Come on, just start praising him. Praise him, praise him, praise him. The mercy of God is upon you. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. The mercy of God endures forever. The mercy of God endures forever. That means that we don't deserve it. That means that, you know what, we made some mistakes, but God is having pity on us. God is having mercy on us. God is a compassionate God. And God, listen to this, truly loves you. God truly loves you, and he's going to continue to watch over you. Can I get a witness? Amen. So you got to give him a praise for that. Well, anyways, anyways, I didn't come here to preach, amen. I came here to receive, amen. But well, we have a precious ministry, amen. Voices. <coughs> Voices of the streets. Ministries, amen. Cutting edge ministry. Powerful ministry, Amen. An anointed ministry and Pastor Andrew very we're very blessed with Pastor Andrew and Pastor Crystal is that they came all the way from Texas to minister to us. Amen. Yeah. This man carries a heavy anointing. God speaks through him. A lot of things that he shares manifest it happens. And we love you, Pastor Andrew. Amen. We just want to wish you a happy birthday, amen. I'm not good, I'm not doing introductions, amen. But <laughs> come on up, come on up. <laughs> Amen. We're going to invite this ministry up. Is it Pastor or Evangelist Christina? Christina, okay. <laughs> Everyone's giving each other nicknames here. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Well, it is good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, we are happy to be with you guys today. This is the last day of the revival. Uh, oh, yeah. And, you know, the Lord has been so good to us, speaking to us every single day, and we are blessed. Uh, before we start with Pastor Andrew, I just want to read Psalms 100. It says, make a joyful shout to the Lord. Hey! Oh, yeah. Yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Amen. Amen. 
Um, yes, we are Voices of the Streets Ministry uh, from Houston, Texas. I live in Puerto Rico, but we came together to, you know, to be part of this event. Uh, you can find us in platforms, uh, Facebook, YouTube, and you can find a podcast in all platforms as Mr. Voices of the Street. So if you can join me in prayer before we start, uh, if you can stand up. So we can just communicate with the Lord, communicate with our Father. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you, Lord, because we were safely uh, sleeping. We got up today. We had something to eat, and we got ready to come here to receive your presence. Thank you, Father, for this amazing opportunity. Help us, Lord, connect with you. Help us, Lord, take advantage of this time, of this opportunity that we can get to know you better, that we're able to fellowship together, that we're able to hear your words. Lord, we don't want to go out the same way as we came in. So help us leave everything behind. Amen. Lord, thank you for the opportunity that you've given every single one of us to come before your presence today. Forgive us of our sins, Father. Let the blood of Jesus Christ penetrate into our lives yeah. that we understand how amazing and the truth that it is to live a life according to your will, according to your commandments, Father. We want to praise you with our lives. Help us understand the seriousness of the relationship with you. And help us take this light that we have inside here, take it outside to our families, to our friends, to our coworkers, to our school, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We don't deserve such a blessing, yet you have come into our lives. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Oh, and before we go, I just want to pray for Pastor Andrew, Lord, for the word that he has today. Bless him, Father. Speak through him, Lord. Help us have our ears open and our hearts open to what he's going to say, Lord. Thank you. <coughs> this is Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Pastor Amen. Andrew. Amen. with me um have you guys ever heard of a promise bible yes. yeah yeah yes. promise bible yes so what a promise bible is is a very small <coughs> book not replacing the bible so what this is is if you open it up and go to the index there is the table of contents in here and what it is is it has words like anger death courage guilt health and troubles holy spirit uh, hospitality and what it is is you turn to a page let's say what does God say about gossip right you go to page 54 and what it is is it tells you all the scriptures that have to do with gossip in the Bible and so it's just kind of a, uh, it, it's, a, it's a quick way to help you navigate through the Bible with certain words uh, grace, growth fruitfulness and it gives you the scriptures on where you can find them so I have two of these books here does anybody want one okay well I'll tell you what I have three of them can you grab the other one out of my, my bag or whatever I have I have a lot more but I didn't bring them with me I didn't have a chance to bring them with me I have one more you can have that one right here well right over here right Tell you what, I have several of them. I can ship you some. <laughs> you can put them over here. No, really, we have. I have a, another church that uh, they they donate cases of them to us, and I, and we pass them out for many years now. I've, I've given out hundreds of them, so they're awesome Amen. Uh, books to help you navigate through the Bible, find certain things, certain topics that maybe you don't. Somebody doesn't really. Uh, um, they're new. They have. They've never really read the, the Bible before. I grew up in a house in a Catholic home, but we had one Bible on the, in the house, but nobody was allowed to touch it. 
<laughs> so, no, don't touch, don't touch it, don't. So, you know, when I finally got a Bible, I, I read through the whole thing, and you know, that Promise Bible helped me afterwards to navigate my way, um, finding certain topics that I was thinking about, but I couldn't find it. So this really helped me. Um, so uh, yes, this weekend has been a very purposeful weekend. And unless you guys were here last night or saw the recording, we are sitting in still what is a miracle happening. There is, there, there is, uh, uh, I, I'm very excited because sometimes there's things you would never expect. We did an outreach in, in downtown Houston one day and a guy was huffing on a, on a paper bag, right? Snying. He was... <laughs> on some heavy drugs, sniffing paint or something in his bag. And we had just finished doing an event, and so we're, we're cleaning up this park. It was for the, uh, for the homeless in the downtown. And so we're picking up chairs and tables, and that guy who wasn't even at the event, nobody saw him there, was huffing on this brown paper bag. And he looks right at me, he goes, you need to tell the people to repent, the Lord is near. Mm. And he walks off. Didn't stick around. Nothing. Right? But this is saying that, you know, God will deliver a message to anybody. Amen. Uh -huh. And if you have ears to hear, uh -huh. hear what Amen. the Lord is saying. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, a couple of months ago, I started a journey back into a book that I haven't really opened up in, in a while. Certain books in the Bible, even though I've read through them, they'll be in the back of my mind for a long time. And then when the Lord brings it up, it hits me to where I spend about three or four weeks looking at two or three paragraphs in the Bible. And Hosea is the book that the Lord put in my heart for this trip. Mm. Oh yeah. So Hosea is a book in the Old Testament. But God never changes. Amen. God never changes. I've got these two cards here that I, I share whenever I go somewhere and given the opportunity. As we begin this service, I want you guys to remember this. Remember this. And if you want to write this down, write it down or look at the recording later. But this is very important to realize because I've seen so many believers, so many people who know God, who have been going to church for 20 years, but still are defeated Christians. Uh, when you see pastors committing suicide, when you see pastors committing adultery on their wives or the wives to the husbands, there's something wrong going on in the church. So it is important to remember this. You'll only defeat the devil when you've got a foundation of God's word and you act upon it. Your level of faith is directly related to the degree of God's word dwelling in your heart. That is the word, capital W, that is the word when it, which is reality to you and which you are daily walking. When people are in a, uh, when people are in a place of, of where faith is high, where there is a mass faith, faith, last night there was a mass faith. Uh -huh. There was a mass faith. Or where the gifts of the Spirit are in operation, it is comparatively easy for them to receive healing. Hold on to what the Lord has given you. The Word, capital W. Amen. Yeshua, Jesus. He is the word. Abide. Amen. 
And something that I've, I, I've quoted many times. My uh, spiritual grandmother gave me this about 10 years ago. And she's been on with the Lord now about four and a half, maybe five, five years now. And uh, I still read this. I will encircle the immovable walls in my life. And by my faith, those walls will fall down. Amen. By my faith, those walls will fall down. Can he, uh, the reference to that is Hebrews 11.30. Then I am established and anointed by God, according to 2 Corinthians 1.21. I declare that I have uncommon great faith in the power of Jesus Christ, faith that cannot be found anywhere else, according to Matthew 8.10. Here, for I will speak excellent and priestly things, and the opening of my lips shall be for right things. For my mouth shall utter truth, and wrongdoing is distasteful and loathsome to my lips. All the words of my mouth are, are true, and, and nothing crooked is in them. According to Proverbs 8, 6 through 8. When you quote these things, when you do these, when you live a lifestyle of God's word, these attacks, these things that the enemy is trying to do to you, they become irrelevant. Amen. They no longer matter. Amen. They no longer matter. And he, and um. In Hosea, in Hosea, has anybody here ever read that book? Hosea. Not a very popular book in the Bible. Not a very popular book. But Hosea, and, and it's and it's a uh, pretty amazing that it's not a very popular book because in Hosea it's speaking about God's character wow. and God's emotions. Yes. His emotions. You know, I don't know about you guys, but I've heard countless times God is happy, God is joy, God is all, God is, you know, he's always happy. Yes. But in Hosea, God was grieved. Mm. God was saddened. He was hurt. Uh -huh. He was disappointed. My son back here the one that was making all the racket back here. You know, when I first started going to church, I had my oldest son with me from my uh, previous, and he was about the same age, and he was making some noise, and the pastor from up front heard, heard me from the back of the church. It was a huge church, and he heard me from the back of the church telling my son, shh, quiet, sit down. And the pastor goes, I love it when children are in the church, and I love it, I love to hear their voices. I was like, uh-oh. He goes, that's what we need in this house. We need children in here to learn. Yeah. Wow, Amen. okay, well, never mind, son, get up. You know? <laughs> so, you know, it, it doesn't bother me anymore that he's back there doing his thing, you know? I love when he says, hey, amen, and stuff back there. So if you hear that, let's uh, celebrate. <laughs> So, <laughs> but God went through a series of emotions in Hosea, and what bothered me last night is I was I was upset and I was angry a bit to to know how much the enemy has tortured certain people. It's like my own flesh and blood brother mm -hmm. getting bullied at school. And that's what happens when you see these people in the streets who have gone through certain things in life. And you feel like, look, the enemy has been bullying my brother for all these years, telling him he's worthless and he's nothing and he's all these things. Well, hold on now. Now it's time to untangle this web of lies that the enemy has placed into the minds of the people. In the book of James, it says, but where do wars come from? From within. 
from within the mind. The yes. battlefield is in our mind. Yes. If you can overcome them in your mind, yes. you don't have physically have to do with things. That's right. I been I went to a, to an, an an outreach that we did too also at the same place where that guy was walking by in, in uh, downtown Houston and a woman pulled out a knife and charged another woman. And I was about three or four feet from that woman about to get stabbed. And another lady who was on the other side of me happened to glance over and said, Angels, de detain her. I would not believe it if I, didn't, if I was not standing right there. But that woman got tackled by thin air. Wow. Thin air knocked this woman on the ground and the knife right out of her hands and she was out of breath. <laughs> Like she just came and got tackled. Wow. Thank you, Mark. When you're in a place of high faith, Amen. it makes it so easy for miracles to happen. Ouch. But you have to be that one. Look, if, if, if you're constantly in that presence of God and you don't let things around you affect you, uh -huh. now, Right. Now, right. you're in a place of faith where the enemy cannot touch you. Amen. Yeah. I shared a little bit about the Psalms 91 Psalm, right? Everybody quotes that. He is my refuge. He is, but hold on, you're forgetting. Who is that promise for? Who is he protecting? Those who are dwelling under his shadow. That's right. How close do you have to stand to somebody to be in their shadow? Right. You've got to be right there. Right. This is probably one of the most important things any believer can ever hear. God is not obligated to you. He's obligated to his word. And if his word says, he who dwelleth under the shadow. Look at that. Now you're protected. Now you're in his refuge. Now now, now, yes. all these things come to life. God went through a series of emotions with Hosea. Let me just share a little bit who Hosea was. Hosea was a prophet who stepped in the scene a little bit after Amos in the Bible. And Hosea was a great prophet. God showed us his emotions through this man. God tells Hosea, Hosea, go get you a wife of whoredom. Go get you that woman of the night and make her your wife. How is it that one of the most respected men at this time in the world, the man who hears from God and God tells him, go get you that woman over there. The woman of the night. And make her your wife. You can imagine what Hosea must have felt. Hold on, me? Go with her? That woman? You know how many men she done been with? You want me to make her my wife? And God said, not just that. I want you to have kids with her. He said, I want you to have kids with this woman. And the reason why I want you to marry this woman is because my people have prostituted themselves against her. Because my people, not the people, my people, mine, have been prostituting themselves to other things, other nations. The time of Hosea, the people of Israel were the most prosperous people in the world. They had summer houses up in the mountains. They lived a very good life. There was no famine. 
They were surrounded with good things, so much so. I know there's kids in here, but there was men with men, women with women. They thought because there was another nation close to them that when they would mingle like that, they would receive more money. They would become more prosperous. So the people of Israel said, well, if they're doing that, let's, let's try it here. And Israel became very prosperous. Don't we see much of that today? Yes. People doing these wicked uh -huh. things like that, uh -huh. and they're receiving. And I even know believers today that question their own faith and say, why is it that Christians are broke? Look at these other people out here. They don't suffer. Oh, but there'll be a time. Oh, well, there'll be a time. Uh -huh. I, I I know there's some um, there's a there's a certain form of witchcraft that you they restore your youth, make a sixty year old seventy year old man look like he's in his twenties. You don't think people are gonna try to follow that routine? What did he do? Oh man, there's certain things that the enemy would do, but oh. There'll be a day. There'll, there'll be a time. There'll be a time when the, enemy, the enemy's going to come and collect. Collect. And when it's time to collect, suffer, gnashing of teeth, all these things. Be careful. So the first child that Hosea has with his wife, her, her name's Gomer, Gomer had a reputation already, right? That's why Hosea picked her. Or rather, that's why the Lord picked Gomer for him. So the first child's name is Jezreel. Jezreel. Jezreel translates to may God give seed. May God give seed. The next child, Lo Ruhama. Lo Ruhama means not pity, no compassion. He said, Because I will no longer have compassion on these people. I will no longer pity you guys. I'm not going to feel sorry for you no more. This is a marriage between God and his people. These are the emotions that God's going through. Jose, name your children this. May God give seed. That means the people are going to be crying out, Lord, let us multiply. Yeah. Now I'm not going to pity you. Uh -huh. I'm not going to have no compassion on you. Uh -huh. Lo, lo am I. Lo am I was the third child that Hosea had, I mean that Gomer had, outside of her husband. So she had an affair on her husband. Had a baby. And God said, name that child not my people. Not my people. God tells him these things. I'll tell you what, I know a lot of couples that go through some rough things, but this is pretty rough. To name your children these names, and then to still be with the woman who just had an affair on you, had another baby. So, I want to turn to, because I want you to see something here with the people at this time. This woman and God's character. It's important to know somebody's character because look, I want my son, my, I want my little one mm -hmm. to be like daddy. Uh -huh. I know that a lot of men makes us feel happy when our sons look up to us and want to follow us. I don't use foul language, period. Not by myself, I don't. 
Uh-huh. What I just read here a while ago, I said, uh, 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 these words, they're distasteful and loathsome to my mouth, to my Why? lips. I can't form certain words out of my mouth anymore. I can't. And if, and if you know, I, I know some people that they come and they preach the word, they share the word, they go home and they're by themselves and they're a whole different person. They're out there cursing and drinking and doing all these things, and then they back it up with scriptures, and then they say, "Well, is, is it really a sin?" And it don't matter, man. What does God's character say? Mm-hmm. Some things aren't written down letter for letter, but what does God's character say? Who is who is God? Are are, are you worshiping a a hippie with long hair and blonde hair and blue eyes, or? Is it the creator of the universe? The maker of the heavens and, and, and the earth? What God are you worshiping? What God are you praying to? The God I'm praying to, I want to know who, who this God is. Yeah. I want to discover him, and I want to be like him. I want to follow him. I want to fall in love with him. So if we look in the book of, of, of John, now we're going to the New Testament. We're going to the book of John chapter 8. Amen. And you'll see another picture. I'm going to say it like this. Everything in the Old Testament, it speaks about Jesus. Amen. Everything in the Old Testament speaks of Jesus, yes. of God's character, yes. and who God is. Amen. If, you, if, you, if you only read the first five books of the Bible, you got the entire Bible. You got Jesus in the Old Testament. In the first five books, yes. you have the entire Bible. All 66 books in, in those first five. But God had to break it down for us. Break it down for us. All the way to the very end. But if you, if you can get those first five and download them in your spirit, you have the whole Bible. And so, what we just read about in Hosea... I'm going to go to chapter 8 in the book of John, and I'm going to I'm going to start with verse 9. When they heard, they began to leave. What, oh, hold on, no, 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 before that. I'm going to start with verse 1, I'm sorry, verse 1. But Yeshua went to the Mount of Olives at, da- at dawn. He came again into the temple. All the people were coming to him, and he sat down and began to teach them. The Torah scholars and the Pharisees began, or, or and, I'm, I'm sorry, forgive me. The Torah scholars and the Pharisees bring in a woman who had been caught in adultery. After putting her in the middle, mm-hmm. and I know most of you have probably seen the movies, seen all these things, you know how the image, what's going to happen right now. Woman's brought into the middle of all these men. They're, they're ready to throw stones at somebody. Murder was lurking right there, right? Uh-huh. So they say to, to Yeshua, teacher, this woman has been caught in the act of committing adultery. In the Torah, Moses commanded us to stone such a woman. So what do you say? Now they were trying to, they were, they were saying this to trap him. So they would have grounds to accuse him. But Yeshua knelt down and started writing in the dirt with his finger. Mm. Right? So he's writing in the dirt with his finger. A big question that a lot of people have is what was he writing in that dirt? Mm -hmm. Because one by one, they all started to walk away. Stones started hitting the ground. One by one, they walked off. Now, when they heard, they began to leave one by one. I'm sorry, hold on. They kept asking him, and he stood up and said, The sinless one among you, let him be the first to throw a stone at at her. Mm -hmm. He knelt down again and continued writing on the ground. When they heard, they began to leave one by one. The oldest one first, until Yeshua was left alone with the woman. In the middle, straining up, Yeshua said to her, Woman, where are they? Did no one con- condemn you? No, sir, she, she said. Then neither do I con- condemn you. Yeshua said to her, 
go and sin no more. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Why would he say something that wasn't true? Why would he tell her to go and sin no more? Why would he tell her something that was impossible to do? His love and compassion for this woman who was just caught in adultery was giving compassion so much so she was forgiven. Amen. Amen. At that moment, restored. She didn't have to take a 12 step program. Mm. I'm not talking against 12 step programs, but I didn't have to take one either. Amen. When the Lord delivered me, I was delivered. Yes. Now, that question again, what was he writing? Because it made everybody walk off. It wasn't just let the one who's among you sinless go. What was he writing? Well, <clears throat> I had this revelation years ago, and it was in Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah 17. And I'm going to start with verse 13. Adonai, you are the hope of Israel. All who forsake you will be ashamed. Those who depart from you will be written in the dirt. Those who depart from you will be written in the dirt. Could he have been writing names on the ground? And they happen to glance over and say, oh man, he knows. Oh man. Oh man. He knows something. And they didn't want to be put, put to shame in, in front of everybody. Could he have been writing on that ground? And he stood up and he got back down and he started writing again. Could he have written something that would have put them to shame that they had to depart from him? Who was that woman that the Messiah himself came to such a woman to forgive her? I've heard a lot of people tell me, I don't know if God can forgive me for what I did. I don't know if God can forgive what I've done. I had met this, this brother one day. I went to a, uh, a house of one of my best friends growing up became a uh, pretty well-known dealer in the neighborhood. And his entire house was gutted. And you had prostitutes, you had drugs, you had this, you had that, all in that house. Everywhere. House was gutted. There was there was no walls in this house. There was mattresses on the floor. That was it. And I walked in his house one day and I said, wow, man. You know, uh, he told me, he was telling me about how his, uh, his son's mom didn't want to let him see his son. And I said, do you blame her? How would you feel if your son came over here and they did a drive by in your house and your son died? Uh -huh. How would you feel? Mm -hmm. How would you feel? Because his house had already, they had been doing drive, they've already, they shot his house several times. Uh -huh. He was so paranoid when I pulled up, uh -huh. he pointed the gun at me and was ducking behind his car. And I had to call his name and say, hey, I told you I was coming. Oh, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, Andrew. I'm sorry, man. He put it back in his back pocket. I'm sorry, man. I, I, I forgot, man. I forgot. The life he was living, he was still living. That day that I came to visit him, we prayed. And he goes, I want you to come do that outside. I said, what? He goes, I want you to pray for everybody. I said, man, they don't want to hear this, man. And he goes, it's my house. If they don't like it, let them leave. 
The Lord has administered to about 20, 30 dudes out there. Cocaine baggies were hitting the ground. Joints were being stepped on. Everybody's hands were up. One of the guys walked off. He went off to the side of the house. And I went over there. So what's up with you, brother? He goes, I grew up in church. But what I've done, God cannot forgive somebody like me. He was part of a um, cartel. And his job was to chop up bodies. That was his job. And he said, what I've done, he goes, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hell, man. How do you minister to somebody who's experienced this and gone through that, right? So I shared with him the scriptures, one verse in, in particular. When Yeshua, when Jesus was talking, and he said, all, all, capital A, capital L, capital L, all sins forgiven. Amen. There's, there was no distinction of what kind of sin. No matter how sick and twisted it may seem. A, L, L. If, if you believe it. But then we got to act upon it, right? You can't have faith by doing nothing. That's not faith. Faith is an action word. It shows action. Right now, I'm walking. This is the action. I am walking. Faith is that exact thing. It's a motion. You have to move towards something. I have to have faith that this chair is not going to break when I sit on it. Because I'm tall. Stop being tall because I'm tall. But I have to have faith that that chair is going to support my weight. Well, have faith in God. How do you how do you show this kind of faith? And I don't want to go too too far off of what I was talking about here, but Hosea had to have this kind of faith in order to trust in the God that he couldn't see but he could hear. People just could have thought, Hosea, you're insane. You're not hearing from the voice of God. Why would God tell you to marry a woman like that? Have kids with her. Name her this. this Hosea, this is crazy. Just stop. We're already doing great here. God's blessing us. Look at all this stuff we have. Hosea, you're, you're crazy. <clears throat> At this moment, God had every right to divorce Israel. At this moment, God had every right to do away with Israel. Start over again. He had every right to divorce. All the grounds were there. Israel had adopted the rituals of other nations. Paganism, all these things started happening. Gomer left him. She went from the street life to becoming the wife of the most respected man wow. in Israel Good work. Good work. to go back. She went back to the street life. God told Ho Hosea she's going to go back and chase her lovers again. Hosea was done. He goes, you know what? I'm done, I'm done with it. God said, no, you're not. No, you're not. Hosea, I need you to see what I see, and I want you to feel what I feel. Have you ever been divorced? Anybody on your second marriage, third marriage, fourth marriage? How bad did it make you feel? How do you think it makes God feel every time his people run off back? Run back. Instead of towards him. They run back. 
God wanted Hosea to feel what he felt, the pain, the hurt, the disappointment. Mm -hmm. Hosea got angry and upset and said, I'm done. Done. Done with her. God said, no, you're not. I want, you, I, I want to go back and get her. Go pick her up. Bring her back to the house and be her husband. In obedience, Hosea goes back. Picks her up. Sounds like a happy ending now, right? Pretty woman, that old woman down there. <laughs> she goes back to the streets. She goes back to the street life. Hosea now is disappointed again. Tells his kids, go get your mom. Bring her back home. Talk to your mom. Please, go get your mom. The kids beat it with the mama. She want to come back. She was doing her thing. She's, you know, she said, you know what? I'm going to go back. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing here. I'm going to, you know, all these men love me. They give me these gifts. They're giving me things. Why should I go back to him, to one guy? I've got multiple guys. Give me whatever I want. And then she realized something. I'm not happy. I have everything. I'm not happy. Because you can have the world, but without God in it, you'll never be happy. You'll never be happy. That's why you can see somebody with very little, and they're happy. You can you can you see people who have almost nothing, and you look at them like that person serves God. They don't even have they don't have nothing. You can't put a price tag on happiness. You can't put a price tag on joy. Gomer was out there, and then she admitted. Will he take me back? Will he take me back? The Lord tells him, bring her back. Yes. But I'm going to change the names of your kids now. And this is how God deals with his people. So I'm changing their names. Jezreel, your name is not going to be, may God give seed. It's going to be God has sown. First child, God has sown. See who's there. No Ru Ruhama, your name is now Ruhama. Ruhama means I will have compassion on you now. Ruhama, I will have compassion Amen. on you now. Lo, lo am I became am I, which is you are my people. Remember, Ami was the child that was not his blood. When you see today, look, this Bible, the Word of God, was written for the Jewish people. It's for the Jew. But not my people, you will be my people. <laughs> now we're we're in the family. Come on. We're in the family now. Yes, we are. A lot of people get it twisted. They think that the Jews are, are exiled and kicked out, and now it's it's this only for the uh, for the the, the Gentiles. Yeah. But hold on now. The only reason why we're part of this family because God's mercy, His love <laughs> for not my people. Yeah. Now you're my people. Yeah. Now you're my people. Yeah. You are my people. Thank you, Jesus. You are my people. Hallelujah. You are my people. Thank you, Father. God shows us his emotions through the life of this prophet. The pleading, the come home, come home. The no, no, I want to keep doing my own thing. 
But all the while, God's calling us, come home. Amen. Will you come home? Will you come home? We are miserable and undone without Jesus. Amen. We are miserable and undone. There's no completion in us. Very true. You can become a multi-billionaire living Beverly Hills. Coming from where I'm from, that's a long way. I'm from Texas. <laughs> but there's another word in here. And I believe at the end of Hosea, there's a word that was used. And it's a word that us as believers have to do. Mm -hmm. We have to do this too. By going out in the world and doing these other things and seeking up after other things, we've been prostitutes mm -hmm. to the one that loves us. Mm -hmm. There's a word I love to share with people. Teshuva. To teshuva is to turn. Amen. Teshuva. To turn. To turn. And that's the word that is used in the scriptures, in the original scriptures. Teshuva. It means to turn your back towards sin and look at the Father. Amen. Amen. Gomer had to teshuva, turn her back towards that lifestyle. She didn't get it right the first time, but we didn't either. Amen. She didn't get it all, all to, together the first time she, she came home. She left, came back, and then she left again. But all the while, in obedience, Hosea said, okay, babe, come home. Come home. Now, I don't care what part of your walk you're in right now. There's something that, that is, is, is trying to stop you and pull at you away from God. The world will try to entice you away from God. The world will dangle things in front of you to pull you away from God. A job, mm. a house, mm -hmm. relationship, mm -hmm. family, friends. If that person is not serving God, I will not, you know what the scripture says, I will yeah. not take wicked counsel. Yeah. And the problem is says, I will not take wicked mm -hmm. counsel. What's wicked? Everything outside of God. Amen. You could be a, a yoga instructor in tune with the universe and all of this and that. I won't listen to a word you have to say. Mm -hmm. Don't give me advice. Right. You could be a school counselor who does all these things, but yet you devil in crystal arts and all this other kind of stuff. Don't don't put me in my ear, please. Come on, that's right. Please. Unless you you know, unless the words you're telling me are coming out of this. I don't want to hear it. That's right. I don't want to hear it. I will not take wicked counsel. Amen. I will not take wicked counsel. I'm going to finish it off with this, and if you want to come up in a bit, in a second here. But I want to pray today because, like, I was saying, I didn't need a 12 step program. And I'm not going to be insensitive. And I do the quotation marks because I have to. I'm not going to be insensitive because I have friends of mine that the 12 step programs help them. The, you know, selling water bottles in the middle of the street help them. But I came out of the same lifestyle. The gang bang too. I did drugs too. I lived my lifestyle too. I was left for dead twice in the middle of the street. They had to drag my body to safety. Living a hard life, I know it's rough. I was there too. But when I was sick and tired of myself, 
to where I couldn't look at my face no more. And then God said, now I can. Now I can do something with you. And it was, it was in that moment when the Lord made it simple for me. You, you can either come home or you don't. I knew where I was going. I had already accepted and admitted to the world, my family, I'm on a highway to hell and I'm taking everybody with me. That was my, one of my famous lines. And so... When the Lord said, no, 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 son, I got you. I got you. That was a feeling that I've never in my life have ever felt. And people say, oh, what about when, you, when your children were born? I was there when my son was born. But it doesn't compare to when the presence and the glory of God overshadows you, overtakes you, overwhelms you and brings you to your face. And I cannot ever describe what I felt with words. But I let my actions show my gratefulness. Three months ago, I decided to make this trip. I called Pastor and said, hey, hey Pastor, I want really want to do this. But the thing is, I want to do it on the anniversary of, of my life. Amen. I didn't want to come and, and, and you know, let loose and celebrate on my birthday. That's not, what, that's not what this is. Matter of fact, we were inside most of the time in that house. We haven't been out. Okay, we went to the Friday house. <laughs> but that was it. <laughs> so... I mean, we didn't come and go to Disneyland. I've got three other kids at home. I only brought this one because you can't sleep without mommy and I guess without daddy too. Well, I can't sleep. We can't. But three months ago, this is how awesome God is. Talking about your testimonies, about giving. I will have nothing in my pocket, nothing in my bank. And I will give my last dollar away to somebody I don't even know, right? My wife, friends, when I first met, met my wife, and she didn't understand the passion fully yet. And I don't think she still understands fully the passion that I have for sharing the word of God. And you know what I was telling you? Why are you, all, why are you always helping people? You need help. What are you always helping people for? Well, when I told the Lord months ago, and I said, I want to come back to California. I want to first see this answered prayer that we talked about. I want to, I want to see that. We came out here, did, did the event. And it wasn't like this weekend, but we had a weekend of preaching and teaching. It was an evangelistic thing. We're going to hit the streets. My passion the last time was to hit the streets. I wanted to hit the streets and find people in, in the streets. And we did that. We came back here, had an event, but for the entire trip, as I'm driving, we took, uh, on the GPS, it was 22 hours to get here. It took us 26 hours for all the stops. So I was pretty tired, but the whole time, and I drove most most of the way. Fortunately, we had like, I think it was like seven of us that came, so we switched drivers. And I was asking God, what is it about this place? Because every time I'm going somewhere, God, what is, what's going on here? Yeah. I didn't have to ask Pastor, yeah. what's going on in this place? And the Lord told me there was a portal opened up in this property that was allowing the enemy to stay here. There was an invitation for the enemy to stay here. I don't care how much you scream and shout and you command this thing to leave, it's not going to even move an inch unless you have the authority. And that authority is not just given to you because you said the sinner's prayer. Because Jesus said that these come out with prayer and fasting. 
prayer and fasting. And when you reach a certain level of faith, it's automatic. Yeah. We did a prayer walk in, in, in Houston, and there was a flea market, huge, full of witchcraft. <clears throat> and we did a 5.5 mile prayer walk in silence. But when we got in front of that flea market, I told everybody, it was about 30 of us. And I said, now we're going to shut this place down. There was no warning. That I know some of the vendors that were working there. Within three months, that place was a parking lot. The owner of the property sold it to a, 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 a developer who just didn't even want the flea market, just wanted the parking lot. They shut it down. Whoa. The vendors were upset because they said, man, they didn't give us a warning. We had to last minute pack all our stuff and leave. When, when, when God gives you an eviction, it's official. You don't got to go to court. You, you can't go to court. You can't try to fight the eviction. No squatters allowed. You're getting out. All the way above it all. all getting out. Above. That's you. the authority. So here, when the Lord showed me there was a Thank portal that was you. open, there was three businesses here that That's I specifically right. stopped in front of because we walked this parking lot and I poured oil Everyone throughout this whole parking lot. We walked around this parking lot with oil. And two of those places, however, have already changed businesses. One of them, the church at the, at the very end. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so there was one more place that hadn't shut, shut down just yet. So when I got here, Thursday, no, Friday, got here Friday evening. And I said, I'm going to go look and see what these businesses, if they're shut down. The last one that wasn't shut down yet, they have a note on their door right now that says, we have moved, temporarily closed. <laughs> and I told them the last time I was here, I said, Those, their days are numbered. Yes. That was six months ago. I said, their days are numbered. We Get ready. Yeah. yeah, they were practicing yeah. some heavy witchcraft in those places. Yeah. That one in, in, in particular was the last one. It was stubborn. It didn't want to leave, but it left. Some demons are more hard-headed than others. But stand on the word of God and you'll see how eviction time is. Hallelujah. Eviction time. And I, I can say that it's, it's, it's not this. I'm not saying these things to brag on myself. Nothing. It could have been anybody. But when the Lord called, I picked up the phone. Glory to God. Come on. See, a lot of people they, they get it a little bit, you know, confused when they when they say, "Well, I'm just I'm just waiting on God," and they think that means I'm gonna sit down and just wait, like you're in trouble or something. But when you go to a restaurant and a person comes over to you to take your order, that's your waiter. They're taking your order. They're filling up your cup when you when it's running low. <laughs> Asking if you need any more food, you want you want this, you want that. So, Daddy, here I am. Can I fill up your cup? What else? What else can can I do for you, Daddy? So I want to pray. Yes. Before I leave, now my heart. Now that I've shared, God has emotions. Yes. We don't want to disappoint, Daddy. We don't want to hurt his heart. Amen. I want God to think about me and smile. Thank you, son, for answering that call. Jesus said, greater things will you do. And I, 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 I'm not even trying. I'm not trying. People tell me, you, you, it's hard to serve God. It's the easiest thing I've ever done in my life. Because I surrender every day. I surrender every day. <clears throat> Even when you're angry and you and your wife are at odds, God is still God. My wife and I, we're not perfect. My fault. But we know to submit ourselves to God. We know to surrender to God. 
One of us takes longer than the other sometimes. <laughs> let, me tell, let me tell the truth now. Let me tell the truth now. <laughs> but <laughs> we know this to, to surrender ourselves to God. And in that surrender, you see, people think, well, I mean, I, I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to fight for yeah. Why do I gotta raise my voice? There was this one lady, and her and this other guy were arguing about something, talking loud. And then he walks off, and I went over to her. And goes, hey man, and we're talking, and she goes, "Your voice, it's just so soothing." Now I I can get loud. Believe me, my wife knows. My family people know I get loud. <laughs> Come on. But when the spirit of God comes over you, yes, and every word that's coming out of your mouth, yes. we're supposed to bring peace with the shoes of the gospel of peace, right? You armor up, Ephesians six, armor up, shoes of the gospel of peace. That means when you enter that room, when your foot enters that threshold, you cause peace to enter that room. Yes. Cause peace to enter that room. I want to pray. And I want to pray that we all, yes. myself included, mm-hmm. would experience God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Would experience God. We can learn and learn and learn and learn and learn and keep learning and know every scripture and every verse that's in there and memorize the books in, in order. And that's cool. But have you experienced God? Have you experienced His love? And I'm not, I'm not talking about, you know, um, I'm not going to give you verses to read and study and know to learn about. No, no, no. I want you to experience God because when you experience God, everything falls off. Everything falls off. When you enter his presence, all of your stinking thinking, it can't come up. It stays behind. When you enter his presence, all your thoughts, everything, there's a purge that releases all these things out of you. Now, it's up to you if when you leave, and I like how um, Christina shared this with me over back in Houston a couple weeks ago. People come to the altar like they're going to the, the, the airport. They bring all their luggage and they go to the altar and they release it to God and then they get up and they take their luggage right back with them. <laughs> Leave it. Leave it. Leave it at the altar. Don't pick it up. We had did an event for this uh, Christian artist. Well, not for him. We did an event, and this Christian artist who's known around the world came to the event. I didn't know that this guy was, you know, he's still, you know, not putting this, not saying, you know, this is a, a big scene or anything like that, but he was smoking cigarettes. I didn't know that. But when he entered into the presence of God, he didn't even come up and perform. He had a touch from God before anything else, before he could come in any further. And he took his pack of cigarettes and threw them all on the altar and walked off. He left his luggage. Left his, his luggage at, at the altar. If we had more people who would come and just leave it. I don't even want this no more. Leave it. I'm not picking that thing up. It's easy once you've entered into something like this. Now, this is extreme Christianity right here. People look at, you know, they look at these Muslims who were bombing and all these things. They call them extremists. We are too. Extremely seeking the presence of God. Be the church that steps away from the norm and extremely pursues God. 
extremely perceive God. I'm gonna call my wife up here to minister in song, and as she's doing that, I'm gonna step down. And when I step down, I want if you want to, if 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 you want to come up and experience God, come up front. And I love to pray with you. Oh, hi, Hika. I love to pray with you. We've uh, done this in prison. <laughs> Texas, for I want people to experience God, and and it, it doesn't ever fail. If there's 50 or 100 inmates at this service, every single one of them will come up front. And one thing I don't like doing is a shotgun prayer, because that's like over. Oh, because I want to be intimate with each person, and I want to. I want God to speak to each individual a word. Amen. But sometimes I have to when I go to these prisons because it's, it's too much. And they flood the altar. And I can't pray for everyone. They're going to ask me to leave. I have to get out at a certain time. We don't have a big enough team to go pray for all these people right here. This is a miracle right here. This guy, this brother right here is a miracle.
Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father, for your presence in this place. The presence of the Holy Spirit is the enemy. Let's go. Thank <laughs> you. 